Today I'm going to show you Audacity, our sound file creating software. Today I will show you how to create a sound file, edit it, and upload it as an MP3 file to your blog. But first of all, you need to make sure that you have a microphone and a headset installed on your computer. The first thing we need to look at are these basic buttons. On these we can do most of the simple functions in Audacity. We have a pause button, a play button, a stop button, skip to the start, skip to the end button, and the all important record button. You can explore all the other buttons in your own time. So I'm going to get started by making a recording. If I click the record button you will see a track window appears. And as you can see, it's recording my voice. To stop my recording, all I need to do is click Stop. Now, I can go back to the start of my recording by clicking the Skip to Start button. If I click Play, I will be able to hear the recording in my headphones. I don't think you can hear it that well, but I click play, I can hear my voice in my headphones. Now, if I click skip to the end, it takes me to the end of my recording. If I click record again, this will open another track window. You can have your students recording sound files as well. You can have them reading their books so that their parents can hear what they say. Once I've finished my recording, I click Stop. Now you can see I have two tracks and they follow on from each other. So as you can see, Audacity has recorded my voice. I like to think of this a bit like a text file in a word processor. You can do similar things with your sound file that you do with the text in your word processor. For example, if I hold down my left mouse button and drag it across the sound file, I can select a part of the sound file. Once I've selected that part of the sound file, I can do all sorts of things with it. For example, if I click delete on my keyboard, it deletes that part of the sound file. If I go up to edit, I can undo the delete. and that part of the sound file comes back. If I go up to edit, I can cut that part of the sound file and go anywhere else in my sound file, go edit and paste, and it appears in that part of the sound file. Additionally, I can go to the second track, select all of this, go to edit, cut, go to the end of my first track, edit, and paste. Now you can see my two tracks have become one, so I can delete the second track. This is very handy, especially if you make three or four different takes on one sound recording. You can just cut and paste them all together. So once you've got your track cut and pasted and all joined together how you like it, you might notice that there is a bit of a hiss in the background of your recording. And for your blog, you want the best quality. The good news is that Audacity can remove that noise from your sound file. The first thing you need to do is select a part of your sound file that has the hiss in it. And that is just a complete background hiss. There is no voice recorded in that. Now, once I've selected my hiss background noise, I go up to Effect, I scroll down, there are lots of different effects, but I scroll down to Noise Removal, and this window appears. I click on Get Noise Profile, then I select my entire track, 
I can do that by going Control A. I go back up to Effect, Noise Removal, go OK. Now if I click Play, I can hear that the hiss has been removed from my recording. Now that you've created your sound file, you've edited it, and you've removed the background noise, it's time to export it as an MP3 file. Go up to File, Export, choose your folder, and may I suggest that you make a folder just for your recordings. That way, you know where to find them always. Give your file a name. Make sure that this says MP3 files. It should because we installed the lame MP3 encoder. Go to Options and here you can choose the quality. The higher the number, the larger the sound file will be. The lower the number, the smaller the file will be, but the quality will be lower. On your blog, you only have room for a certain amount of files. I think it's 20 megabytes. So let's just choose 128. For now, click OK, and you're ready to save. Click Save. In this box, you give your MP3 an ID3 tag. This means when learners download your podcast onto an MP3 player, they can see the title of the track. So you can write your name in here. You can give the track a title. And you can do album titles, years, whatever you wish. Click OK. And you can see that it's created our MP3. If we go to our desktop, under My Recordings, you can see we have the MP3 file. In the next tutorial, we will look at how to get this MP3 file embedded on your blog.